That was a horrible clap, but anyway. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Shenanigans Production. No, no, no. Shenanigans Podcast with your girl, Sharita. Yes, I was thinking the Freudian slip, the Shenanigans Podcast, because I am in the creative works of working on my comedy special. And I didn't want to talk about it yet, but why not? Uh, yeah, so comedy special, I'm going to start working on it. And I've already picked out a venue. Super excited. I'm working on my one hour, or at least my 45 minutes. And um, I'm going to work on the guest list. The guest list is going to be, I'm going to need a host. I'm going to need a feature. And I'll, I'll probably just do that. Maybe, maybe a guest spot, I'm not sure. But I'm definitely working on it. Since it's already the end of may and things take time and i am a procrastinator of procrastinators that i have to get on it so that's what's in the works so shenanigans productions is going to be working on the first comedy album super 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 excited yes and if you're just joining us for the first time welcome this is a podcast uh, a comedian podcast meaning i'm a stand-up comedian and i talk about the behind the scenes bullshit that i go through with being a comedian not only just because i'm a female or working mother and a person that just doesn't get along well with society anymore that's what i do Right, and if you are a faithful, loyal downloader, uh, could you switch over to subscriber? We do have subscriptions available, and we would love you so much more. And we do have subscriber gifts. We have shirts. We have um, stickers coming in, or anything you think of that you, you would want as a gift. Let us know, and we'll put the Shenanigans logo on something, and we will send it to you for being a loyal subscriber. So we appreciate you. Ever so kindly. So we do have the cash out. We have the Venmo. And then your subscriptions help me pay for this wonderful studio that we produce in. Right? So we are at Beanalog Studios here in El Paso, Texas. They're always looking for clients. So come on down. Find them on Facebook, Instagram, and support them. And show your love just like I do. So on with it. We were going to have a cast, um, like a special person. Uh, we were going to have Joe Angel. But Joe Angel ran into an emergency, so he will be here next week. And Joe Angel runs the J&M Card and Toy Store. That's the word I forgot last time when I was promoting him, um, that he was going to come down. I was like, yeah, it's toys and something, but it's cards and toys. So if you're into memorabilia, if you have cards, uh, I think it's like baseball cards or sports cards of that nature, Pokemon cards. I don't know if he does Magic the Gathering and those kind of cards, but yeah, so find him. He's at three locations, J&M, Cards, and Toys. And he'll be here with us Monday, Monday, Monday. All right, so today, May 20th, it is Monday again. Uh, happy graduation. Congratulations to the graduates. You did it. I, um, I am super excited because I have three graduates in my house. The twins graduated high school. Whoop, 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 whoop. And my 14-year-old graduated eighth grade. Whoop, 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 whoop. So now I have graduation parties for three people, and I don't know what I'm doing. Graduation is expensive. But so luckily, hopefully, they just want a pool party, and the pool is up and running, and they could just do that. Some hot dogs, some barbecue, because I love barbecue, and we'll just do that. Yeah. So, the last show that I was on, it was called... All right, look, I've been messing these things up. But basically, it was like um, a bits and something. And what it is, is you swapped your comedy bits with another comedian. And I got paired up with Paul Ramirez. Super, super talented, young, up and coming. He just turned 21. He's like our youngest open micer. Uh, he's been doing comedy going on two years now. And he's starting to get his, his travel boots on, starting to go out there, get the National Touring Comic under his belt. He's been to Corpus Christi. He's been to San Antonio. And uh, for those of you who don't know Paul Ramirez, his comedy style is super dark. He goes on to talk about suicide and not being here. And it was kind of depressing. But I was able to pull off his set. I talked, <laughs> I don't know how. But if you've ever been a combat veteran, we're very suicidal. We're very dark. And we're all um, alcoholics. 
So I think that fit right up my alley. Because I was a little bit disappointed. I wanted to do Anthony Austin Brown said he was on the show. And I felt like I could do Anthony Austin Brown. Um, Not because we're the same color, but it was because we both are animated. We like putting our comedy out there. We like being on stage and getting the audience involved. And when you use your body in comedy, um, not that way, in a negative way, but when you're on stage and you have so much space on stage and you're um, more animated more outgoing it gets the crowd involved the crowd is looking at you like oh my gosh like you're really a one man show one woman show up there on stage and remember we talked about that whether you have the five minutes all the way to an hour how do you keep the audience's attention and he goes up there and he does dances he does a lot of impressions because he uh, favors Dave Chappelle he does Michael Jackson so he has a lot of comedic influence as well as musical influences when he's on stage. So to do, and Paul Ramirez is the total opposite again because, like I said, he's 21 years old. He's just becoming comedian. He's just finding his voice and to go up there. He's not animated, but it's his persona, right, his body language. You can still talk with your body language and not be all over the stage not be moving around you can still pull it off whereas you have some comics that will just stand in one spot completely monotone and some for some reason people speak really low you have a microphone use your voice speak up reach the crowd grab them and do your bet and so it was really good challenging. So I was scared. I, I'm not going to lie. I was scared because you don't, when you're picked to do someone else's set, you don't want to do anything that's embarrassing and degrading. Um, and then you don't want to do anything that's like ruining them. Because remember, it's not a comedy roast either. Because at least with a roast, it's like you're talking shit. Um, like everybody saw the roast of Tom Brady. A lot of people were upset. Um, I heard Kim K got booed off the stage or whatever. I didn't watch it. I don't, I don't watch comedy roast because it's like disingenuous. Because it's supposed to be funny. And a lot of people miss the mark with that so i don't watch the comedy roast um it, that's just that's just me and then for some reason they put nikki glasser on every comedy roast so when it's my turn nikki can you come do my roast they put you on every comedy roast girl so like you're the comedy roast queen and i need to know what's your secret what are you doing to get booked for every comedy roast like help our sister out you know so that's what I did. So I did Paul Ramirez's set. Paul did my set. And he did not disappoint. Because, again, I didn't know what I was going to do. Normally when you are booked for a show, you already know what you're going to do. You, you have seven minutes. Um, do something. But I was like, I don't even know what I want to do. We got, And the way we got paired up was the audience picked us, right? So we're on stage. We introduced ourselves. I'm like, yeah, I'm Sharita from Brooklyn, New York. And, you know, Paul, like almost everybody up on, well, no, I was the only one that was like from outside of El Paso. So all the other comics introduced themselves. They're like, yeah, I'm from El Paso, Texas. So the one couple that picked us, they were like, I want you and Josh to like do rock, paper, scissors. And I was like, all right, cool. I'm not going to question it. So we did rock, paper, scissors. I just did scissors three times. Don't blame me. I don't know how to play the game. He threw out, um, a, well, the first time he threw out a rock, a rock beat scissors. He didn't know that. And then the, fir- the last two times he kept throwing out paper and paper cut scissors. So that's how I won. Yay, by default. But I didn't go up against Josh. I, I, and the girl's like, well, we didn't know we wanted you to go up against Josh or Paul. So that's how Paul got picked out of a game of rock, paper, scissors curated by the audience so again that's what you do as an entertainer you make sure that the audience is involved you bring them in and you have a good time with it so paul did my set i did my wisdom power knowledge joke and he took it and he did not talk about wisdom power or knowledge but it was fun so thank you paul ramirez for not being um a douchebag with my comedy and you did me proud and i hope i did you proud as well and that's what we did so the next show coming up, um, so I'm in trouble. <laughs> I overbooked myself. I got scheduled to go to school. So I have to, I, um, I did ask a comic if he wanted my show so that I could let the booker know. I'm like, hey, I got to go play Army for a month and I'm not going to be able to go to those shows. And I was really hyping him up because you know how I love Club 49 and working at In and the Mountain Gods. And then I've never been to Sky Casino. And this would have been my first time performing 
SK Casino. So I'm so sorry I'm not going to make those two shows. It's June 12th and June 13th. So I'm looking for somebody to take over those shows. But worst case scenario, I'm going to have to let the booker know um, if the comic doesn't get back to me within due time. And um, let them know, I'm like, hey, I know I told you I was available. But the army goes marching along. And for those of you who are like, well, why don't you just get out? The army's been my brother and butter since I've been 21 years old. I just can't let the army go. Like, that's just, I don't want to say foolish of me, but the thing about comedy, I've only been doing comedy eight years. I love it. I love getting on stage. I love going and touring and going to different cities to see if other people get me because comedy is hard. Going up on stage and... um. You, you just go out there, you have your topic, and you're making fun of your topic, you're getting people on your side, you're reaching brand new audiences, and again, thank you, so, there's so many people that I meet, and they'll come up to me after the show, and they're like, oh my gosh, I love you, oh my gosh, you say what I want to say, babe, I told you, that's how we females think, you know, so like, it's that women empowerment movement coming back again, you know, being strong, being independent, and being funny, hilarious, and I love it, and don't get me wrong, the guys come up to me after the show too, and they're like, oh, you're funny, you're hilarious, and I'm like, oh, you know, I like your, I liked your set, and thank you. Thank you, because comedy is so hard, and people don't realize that. And my brother's like, you know what? I want to do what you do. I want to go on stage. I'm like, bro, it's not what you think it is. It's not just going up there and standing there, staring at you're staring at 50 people, 75 people, and then they're all staring back at you waiting for you to do something. It's not what you think that is. And he's like, you're not the only funny one in the family. I never said that, bro. I'm just saying, like, if you really want to do it, um, you, you got to commit. So what did he do? He accepted my challenge. He's going all the way to Alaska because we have a, uh, a family friend who's having a birthday party out there. He lives in Alaska, by the way. So all the bros are going, My brother, both my brothers and, of course, um dash's brothers are going there i wasn't invited dash but i'll leave that to figure out why but all the guys are going and they're gonna go to a comedy show an open mic comedy show in alaska and my brother said he's gonna um perform because he was dared so everybody in the group i don't know how the topic came up i don't know exactly what's going on but all it was explained to me was all of us have to write a five minute set or a five-minute bit, and we all have to perform it at the open mic. And I'm like, dude, you're aiming for five whole minutes, and you've never done it before? Now, before you negative nancies come at me, understand something. Comedy is hard to the point where you're not going to have five minutes, right? You might have 30 seconds worth of jokes. And it's not your typical knock knock who's there no or a guy walks into a bar no you have to you have to really dig in and formulate the joke formulate the sentences get the structure um but I did I did offer him assistance I told him that I'm here for guidance if you want help and he was like great because let me run it by you what I was gonna say so he told me his spiel and I said it has potential I did tell him it has potential you have to work on it. You have to trim the fat, cut some words out, and, you know, work on it. And it has the potential to be a good joke. And then I said, after this, what's, what are you going to do for the other four minutes and 30 seconds? He said, huh? <laughs> he said, no, I was going to use this for the whole five minutes. I said, oh, bro, it's not a conversation. That's not going to work. But good luck. I said, if you can figure it out, go for it. He said, well, let me work on it, and I'll get back to you, and uh, we'll chop it up some more. I said, all right, cool. So, yeah. And then also he's like, well, I love your podcast. I start, I got the whole family to listen to your podcast. And I'm like, oh, thank you. I'm like, the whole family? He's like, yeah, I told them about it. He put the podcast in the group chat. Everybody started listening to it. I'm like, all right, cool. Then he's like, let me be your business partner. I said, bro, it's not. That's not, that's not how a podcast works. He's like, yeah, I want to be on a podcast, but I don't want to be on a podcast. I'm like, bro, what do you mean you want to be on a podcast, but you don't want to be on a podcast? He said, can I be a voice? You just want to be a voice? How? how? And, and and I know, like, a lot of people, you have family that you want to go and be part of a thing. Like, a lot of people have support. 
And um, I don't, I don't, I don't believe that you should go into business with your family members. It just doesn't work for me. Like, yeah, like I don't, I don't see how that work. work. And then you have family members that are like take over your business. So I'm like, dude, no, just, just stay where you're at. Just support me from afar. Love you. I love you. So yeah, so that's what we're doing. So it's the month of May. And that's where, we're, well, we got one more week. I don't know what you guys are going to do for Memorial Day weekend. I'm going to get like, oh, my new drink is Hornitos. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, um, I'm going to take more shots of Hornitos. I'm going to get poolside wasted for Memorial Day weekend. And we're still looking for fan mail. So don't forget when you go onto the podcast, it has a fan mail button. And in there, we always ask you, hey, what do you want to talk about? Or, hey, sending us, I don't know, just send something in. Whatever you want to send in. We like fan mail here. So we could read it live. Because we do our show pretty much live and stuff. And my phone's going off over here. It's great. So, yes. But that's what we want to talk about this time. And we always want to say thank you. And comedy is a bitch. For the most part. Yeah. Should I talk about my firing? I should. All right, I'll, I'll I'll talk about it. I'll bring it up. So, those of you who knew I was a bartender, I'm not bartending anymore at the duets. Um, I want to say it was an amicable split. I walked out the door with my dignity and respect, and the other person walked out the door without crawling. Well, so I'll say that. Yeah, you don't threaten your employees ever. Because think about it. The one thing about hiring a combat veteran, you have to understand that we've seen combat. We've seen our brothers and sisters to the left and right of us drop dead in a war zone. And you want to threaten us with physical violence. Do you know how much it took for me to not snatch you up by your neck and drag you through your own kitchen? And I'm gonna, and I'm just gonna put it out here because this is my podcast, and I can do that because that's what we do, right? We talk about the behind the scenes. You don't threaten a combat veteran ever, okay? Whether they're male or female, and it seems like combat veterans that are females, we don't get respect. You think we all just sit in the office and make coffee all fucking day? We do not. We do have respectable jobs, okay? Without us, without being support, without being medics, whatever your job is, women are. are they're here doing 11 Bravos, right? So we have women being 11 Bravos, infantrymen, but the infantry women, right? We have women wearing the ranger tabs. They go to ranger school. They go to sapper school. They go to whatever school that the military affords them to go to. They exceed the standards because they have to work harder because they are women, because they're not accepted in their current field. Well, we have to go through the bullshit gauntlet to get respected, to be accepted. Why do we have to do so much more? We already raised our right hand and said we will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all armed enemies, both foreign and domestic, right? So we all took that oath, right? We all took that oath, right? We, uh, my combat tours were different than your combat tours. I'm highly decorated, and I appreciate those decorations, okay? I'm 100% combat disabled. Would I trade that for anything? Yes. I don't like waking up, snap, crackling, and popping. But I talk about it on stage. I do. Okay? So when I went to the bartend, I was like, hey, it's a job with no responsibilities. I don't have to be in charge of anything. I just got to learn how to make, I, I just need to know how to make Moscow mules perfectly to where they taste delicious. Frozen pina coladas is not hard. Okay? And then... Do you want one shot or two in your Jack and Sprite? That's it. I just got to learn how to make drinks. That's it. Do you know how easy that is compared to getting up at old dark 30 in the morning, going out on an eight-mile run, come back, put on all this gear, and let's go train in the heat. Let's go train in the hot. Let's go train in the sand. Let's go train. And then let's go to NTC for however many weeks we go to. The box sucks. Not taking showers sucks. And before you sit there and say, you volunteered. I know. I volunteered because I thought it was a great thing to do, which it still is. But people are making it a bad thing to do now because people are scared to sign their kids up. They're not letting their kids join anymore because we have so many rapes, harassments, murders, and crazy shit going on. 
that the re- recruitment is so low, they're calling back people that retired that did their 20 and better. And they're like, hey, you got a little bit of juice left in you? They don't. They don't. Okay? But the little bit of fight we do have left in us, I shouldn't have to fight for a job you're paying me $2 an hour for to prove to you that I can work in your bar, your establishment. You know, that was some bullshit. Okay? So, yeah. So I'm no longer work at duets. And like I said, it's an amicable split. And at any time, if you want to have that unprofessional conversation, we could do that. We could do that. Cameras or no cameras, I, 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 at this point, I really don't care. But just know that we're both going to the holding cell because I know you're going to call the cops with your bitch ass, you know. And then we have to sit there and wait for, well, you have a husband to bail you out, and I have my own checking account to bail me out, right? But we're the same sex, so we're sitting in the holding cell, and I'm going to beat your ass some more. Okay. So, so the employer, okay, so for the minimum wage... Okay, for your employer is two thirteen per hour in your paycheck, as long as you're making at least five dollars and twelve cents per hour in tips. Okay, so it can be a total of seven twenty five per hour. So you know you weren't even making minimum wage. Are you serious? serious. So I was there for getting threatened for nothing. Yeah. Oh hell no, bitch. <laughs> and this is coming from TexasLawHelp.org. Texas Law Help. <laughs> Yeah, your bar is going to tank so bad. So you threaten me for $7.26. $0.25. Oh, $0.25. Cents. See, I even gave you an extra cent. So it would have been great beat your ass for $7.26. And then, yeah, she's like, put your chichis out. I don't have any. I had kids. I don't have chichis. She cheated. She's, you know, she paid for hers. But, yeah, like, what? What what possessed you to sit? I'm, well, I know what possessed you because your bar's haunted. And those of you who don't know, Duets is haunted. If you've never been there, the bar's fucking haunted, okay? And like, there, there's like, we don't know how many there are, but we know where they are. And I'll tell you an instance. Like, we wait. We it's it's go time. We're trying to leave the bar. We close up the bar. We turn off all the lights, right? And then there's one light we didn't turn off. I go to face the kitchen because I saw something out of the corner of my eyes. I'm like, who's in the kitchen? And I look to the left to go look at the kitchen, and there's this white silhouette in the shape of a body passing by, walking into the wall. I got the hell out of there. So, yeah, the place is haunted, in case you didn't know. And don't be like, I've been there plenty of times. I didn't see anything. You were inebriated, and you were singing badly to karaoke songs. You weren't paying attention, so don't worry. But, yeah, yeah. But I wish you all uh, I wish you all the best because some people need that job. I didn't. I didn't. Again, like I said, combat veteran, I'm very well taken care of. But what you have to understand is when you transition into a civilian life, you're trying to be as normal as possible, and it doesn't always work that way. I could have had any job. Yeah, I could have worked on polls at the VA and talked about with other VA. And no, some they don't know how to let that shit go. I don't want to be around other vets, okay? And well, I could have worked at the grocery store, but I don't want to stand up. So, like, no. There's so many different jobs. But at least with the bar, you're, you're making drinks and what do... Like like I said, I'm a combat veteran. I used to be an alcoholic. I love alcohol, right? So what's better way to learn how to make some fancy drinks so I can learn them at home? And, you know, so now I just make my fancy drinks at home. Cool. You know? So am I looking for another job? No. No, no, no. I'm just going to do my podcast. And then those of you who follow me on Twitch, I'm going to come back on Twitch. I just haven't figured out what platform. If I'm going to go back to the PlayStation platform, I do have the Xbox right now, the old Xbox. And I can just play some retro games, get my Twitch back up and running. Before My brother's like, no, get a PC. Bro, you're going to buy it for me? Those PCs cost money. And um, I still have four kids to take care of, so... You know, I got to be careful with my little funds. And I don't want to spend, my, you know, I don't get my retirement check yet. I haven't retired yet. That's the key thing. I have not retired from the military yet because I'm too stupid to do that. I want to hold on to it. And you're like, yeah, not, yeah, I know. I know. You did 25 years. If I could do 30, I'm going to do 30. Why not? Like, that's the great, the great thing about the military is, like, they really don't put a time stamp on you when you get out. You get out when you're, like, completely 
utterly broken, yeah, if I could do a desk job and still be 100%, uh, that, and that's what I do. I do a desk job. I'm an instructor. See? I'm an instructor. I teach people how to do my job. It's not hard. Okay? I teach you the in and outs. You want to order supplies? You want to send supplies, ship supplies? You got to return some supplies? Yes. So I teach you how to do my job. And it's really easy. It's really awesome. I love it. And that's that. So, yeah. And I'm currently up for promotion, and we already talked about that. So if I get the promotion, I'm going to stay. If I don't, you know what? I'm going to hang up the boots, and I'm going to go my jolly way. And I'll be fine. But, yeah. What's the key takeaway? Don't threaten a combat veteran. And I'm so mad. I'm just going to end it right there. You guys have a good one. I'll see you next week when we have Joe Angel back with the J&M Cards and Toys as our guest. And anybody else that wants to be a guest, hit us up. Let me know. I'll be asking around. Comics. Hey, you guys can be a guest too. Show us your comedy skills. Love you. Peace.